and you guys uh, i'll share a feedback form with you all so all three of you kindly fill in the feedback form also theek hai okay yeah done thank you okay so we're going to uh, discuss today about design pattern we will go through some of the design patterns and these are the well known design pattern of or this is known as a gang of two design pattern basically there are uh, three kinds of design patterns so what is the design pattern if you want to start with so design pattern is nothing but uh, what you can say these are built in uh, recipes or solutions to applicable to different formats so these design patterns are basically differentiated by the three groups one is known as behavioral design pattern one is known as creation design pattern and also one that is known as structured design pattern okay these are the list of design patterns i'm going to just focus on few of the design pattern that is there and i'm going to show you how you can write this design patterns using our updated java and specifically with the lambda that you can label is okay. so here i'm not going to go through all the design patterns that are there but I'm going to pick up few so then uh, so basically our idea of design pattern these are like existing solution for example say if you say singleton what is singleton design pattern is for example singleton design pattern is nothing but it's a creation pattern it's about creation of objects right so when you're going to create objects i wanted to have in my application there is only single object be created not more than that so for that using a java language how we can do that this design pattern is talking about that the implementation of design pattern is a concept that you can use against different languages be it python be it .net be it ruby or other programming languages but each programming languages has like a different way of implementation based on how you can you know, do that okay. so now like we can use lambda as a design pattern group because some of the benefit of lambda is that that it is very let you write very concise code right and also this lambdas are reflected as a function so we can pass this is like anonymous function so we can also pass anonymous function using functional interfaces in a methods right so that how we can you know, do this so let's go over few of the design pattern how we can you know write that using a lamp but i'm not you know doing everything how to this so you guys need to study on your own on those design patterns. so first design pattern we want to talk about is known as iterated design pattern so basically iterating design pattern is talking about in java we have a example of this design pattern already that is in java we have a iterator so can you anybody tell me what is the iterator does hello sir yeah so iterator is used to like uh, loop over function and uh, like to find the next iterator object we use the iterator no iterator is basically design pattern which is loop over element in a collection okay now yes, this iterator interface uh, can be used with any kind of collection be it map be it uh, list be it set now map list and set all are implemented separately right correct but 
what this interface is doing it's native iterate over that but it not is giving you a particular interface to iterate over it but it's not let you do internal implementation or exposing the internal implementation how we can iterate over the collection okay so in a single terms what you can say the iterator design pattern is basically that let you access over a group of elements okay or objects without knowing the underneath implementation okay or it's uh, similarly we can think of this like a cursor cursor in sql in sql cursor what happened whatever may be your select statement or query that you have the result set you can iterate over now the result set may consist of multiple columns or individual columns but it gives you access to move to the next object so it has like a next method to move to the next object as you're moving next you can also check whether there is more element has element or the object is there has next if it is there then you can call the next so these are the basically methods to which we can iterate over okay so in normal java how you can you know iterate over this So here is an example of iterator design pattern. So say I have a need to determine a factorial, right? So I have to iterate based on the number of element factorial of five, whatever is there. So what is normally I'm going to do? I'm going to be you know iterate or loop through using for each loop with that particular number. And I'm going to be accumulating the product into a variable and returning that. Okay, that is the imperative style or normal style that we have. Now with lambda and stream, how can I do that? So in the lambda and stream, secondly, I have a function called factorial functions, functional. Okay, here I'm again taking the number. I'm going to be, you know, iterate using the in stream. Okay. So in the in stream, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a range close. That means it is going to start with number one and also including the number as a value, right? And then on top of that, I can add reducer. So reducer is first is taking the identity. So first the initial value, what I'm going to be starting with, that is one. Then that is the product. And then you have the index or the value. That is one to five, whatever the value that is eight. And you just simply add product to it and using index. So it's again going to be on loop to the next. The product is going to be holding the value. So far it's calculated. And using that, we can return the factorial function. So it is just a simple iterate over a number or iterate that many number of times. Okay. We can simply use the stream of those collections and then we can use any kind of lambda operation on top of that okay simple example will be for this like if i have like a numbers that are there i can be to with some i can simply use uh, the number stream and then using that i'm just iterate over that so so basically it's saying is that if you need to iterate over for a fixed number of time or a collection instead of you know using for or for each loops please use stream or in stream or double stream as the case may be okay that is much more conscious and you can also you know implement that whatever you know operation or reduction you wanted to do you can simply use the lambda for it so any question on the iterator patterns? So why do you need to use this? Means uh, what is the use of doing means doing this kind of design patterns? Yeah. We so any kind of design pattern the use that I mentioned is that already this design pattern indicate when you're going to design our code, right? This gives us a cookie cutter formula. 
cookie cutter formula means for example you need to requesting an external api right and the external api giving you a response differently correct it has a different data model etc and its response structure is separate now to use that particular data in my application what i need to do is i need to change that particular pattern using convert that into my code base right as per my code base because the interface of that external api is different and my api or our my client for my apis are different now how to do that okay for doing that people may suggest you to use the adapter pattern so what is the adapter pattern going to do is is going to be converting one particular form to another particular form that means you have one target interface that is the say external interface then you have a like an adapter class right and in that particular adapter class to that particular adapter class you going to be that's like a wrapper which going to be implementing the target interface and then whatever you know request response you have to do against that and on top of that you have like adaptive class adaptive class is the class that is used by your adapter class to reuse the existing functionality and the client is basically calling the adapter class so for that what is the benefit i going to get i going to get the design of how to implement adaptive pattern what i can do i can implement this using simple method or simple function now each developer can implement this separately is or our own way right it can be you know just simply create a dto and within a single class you can write all of these code bases to so calling the method getting the response converting the response into a format and then let that particular thing be called by the his own internal or external clients okay now what is the design pattern help us it help us to communicate be between the developer so if the developer see okay this is like a this like a adapter class i can see so i can quickly understand okay he has implemented this solution by adapting or creating a wrapper in as the external api or any kind of external interface where there is a difference between that what kind of data i am expecting at consumer or that particular api is consuming he is actually created an adapter in between and that client is calling that particular adapter and from that adapter based on whatever interfaces is basically you know calling it that been implemented using another adaptive class so this is become a standard solution and now anybody who is going to maintain the code or come back and use to the code can easily understood that okay this person has implemented the adapter class and from the adapter class he has you know now instead of you know calling directly calling the external method he has created a method or wrapper in between against the external client which i going to be using in my case and that particular external client or interface has been implemented as per the need for the external apis and that particular interface is basically converting that particular responsibility for external apis detail into a format that i can understand does that answer the question yes sir okay so basically if i use the well known format or well known solution so i don't have to think and anybody who is going to be again coming back and revisiting the code if i hand over to another developer he can also understand because he can find out okay how we use the same well known solution or well known design pattern so he can you know find out what is the implementation i have done in my case so do you need to remember all the design pattern all the time we we can uh, recall all the design pattern but 
not the all the time we have to uh, use the design pattern so it is the other way around it is not that you're going to fit in design pattern into your code base or you got to implement all the design pattern into your code base it is you need to check this problem like here is the problem is that i have like to call the external api and there is that external api or interface have a different format than my my application so my client cannot directly go i create a wrapper which is my client going to understand and then going to going to use it so i have to check this problem based on problem i going to implement the solution it is not the other way around that i have to fit in each and every design pattern into my code base even if there is no need for such design pattern to be applied okay okay so that we have check into first design pattern that is iterator so any kind of iteration we can use stream so simple if i see a collections or a number i need to look through what i going to use i going to simply use stream okay that is internally implementing the iterator design pattern so now with this code what i understand i see a collection and i have to know that i have to look through or iterate through a number of time instead of using for and for each i got to simply use a string and then look through that so that's my standard solution when i have to do any kind of looking through over a group of collection or any number of time so that's how got to implement this iterator design pattern into my modern java language with the help of stream after java it okay now let's look another example which is like a strategy design pattern now what is the strategy design pattern is about so let's start with a basic example so here say I have a list of numbers, right? In the list of numbers, what I have to do? Basically, I have to calculate sometime the all the numbers. Okay. So, as a, from the first design pattern, what I learn, if I see a list of collection, what I need to use, I need to use stream. to implement iteration right instead of for or for each loop that's first thing i got to implement now here there are like three version of the same number same function real about one first function is doing is is calculating the total count right of this values next number is doing what it's calculating count only for even and third one is the odd number right now if i want to implement that first somebody say ask me to you know calculate the total count then i do that what i going to do i going to you know copy paste and create another version but this will increase the duplication of my code so if i see from my code base what is that only thing that is getting changed is the condition okay is only the condition is getting changed now let's look into the classic understand the classic example of what is the strategy design pattern right okay again strategy design pattern is what is again one of the pattern that is we are getting as if our behavioral pattern so now what is the problem problem out here is that i have left with a similar code but how to calculate the number that particular piece of logic is different okay okay now how can i implement that 
one way to implementing that is that I create a different um, classes. I create one class instead of you know replicating it. I create a one class, say sum of numbers or number calculator, and I there define an abstract method which takes a num uh, takes a kind of, kind of like calculate, and there I can pass the value right, and I can you know refactor this and I can create uh, you know one default implementation in the base class and then I can create one odd number computation and even number computation and in the compute method I can just given this version into the even and this version into the odd that's one way of doing this but does that really reduce the duplicate no because again I have to write the same code and only difference is again in the condition. Okay. So now each of the behavior. So what is changing? The behavior of calculation is changing. Okay. So this way I can implement that. Then if I need to do say prime number calculation or something, then I can extend the base class and I can change the value, right? That's uh, one way of implementing strategy design pattern, right? But if it is like very simple, like here we are doing the calculation, right? So only thing, how can we other alternative way to implement the strategy design pattern? Okay. So, you know, by definition, if we can go, what is the strategy design pattern? It's only talking about, I define a family of, function right and I can easily replace one of them so the family of function is the calculate number okay if I say that so instead of you know you know writing a new you know duplicating the code I create a subclass and whatever you know strategy I have to use I can just using this along with the factory method design pattern I can you know send out that particular strategy. For example, say I have to make a payment, right? Online payment for a particular course. Now, what is the payment consist of? It consists of uh, two similar things. One is the calculation of tax, right? Or one without having to include any kind of taxes. Third, maybe including a discount after tax or discount before tax, right? So in that case, what is changing the tax calculation or the amount to be deducted from the final amount or the initial base amount needs to be changed, right? So here, instead of, so what I need to replace now, I need to replace, I need to interchange based on the payment method the user has selected or the user has been entitled to a particular, add a particular coupon. I have to change the functionality of calculating the final value either based on a discount with tax or based on a tax calculation or without tax calculation or whatever may be the case. Okay. So then I can replace one computation over the another. That means I got to change the strategy of calculation, a strategy of doing something easily replaceable. Now, Generally, traditionally, we do that by inheriting a base class method, okay, and then pass the base class method with any of the concrete child implementation, okay. That's one way of doing this. Now, same thing, how can I do with lambda? Now, in the lambda, what we have is, we certainly going to use the stream, right? Here is the iteration pattern, I'm going to use the stream. When I'm going to use the stream, then I only going to be calculating the number that is there. I can omit out the rest of the number. So this condition can be changed. Now the condition can be like a functional interface. So if I need to use a Lambda, obviously I need to use one of the functional interface. Now any kind of filter or condition based on which I'm going to calculate for which I have one functional interface known as predicate. Predicate having only one method test, which takes an argument of a certain type 
let's say if I say predicate of integer, it will take integer and it will return a value boolean true or false. That means whether the condition is true or false. So in that case, how the value going to be, how the function going to look like first? We're going to have the number of stream, then going to have a filter. And in the filter, we're going to pass a predicate. That is the selector, which value we're going to select. And then you convert this uh, into the in stream. And because on the in stream, we have some function. That's why you're converting that. And then we call the sum function. We get the sum. Now here, this predicate is now becoming your replaceable or interchangeable strategy. Whether you want the strategy is to calculate the event number, whether the strategy is to calculate the odd number, whether the strategy is to using all numbers. Okay. So here the predicate can be sent across like this. Value is true to so all the number that have been selected or it is even number or it is the odd number. Okay. So that's how you can, you know, implement strategy. For example, here we are passing predicate. Other places we can pass uh, by function. Okay, it takes two argument and return certain value. Okay. Or we pass some other, you know, supplying values, right? So we can pass a supplier, and the supplier will be responsible for calculating the tax. That may be the case. Okay. So that's how we can, you know, instead of, you know, implementing the strategy using interface, we can replace the strategy in a certain computation by interchangeably using a Lambda function because all the interfaces are going to be doing is they are overriding the function method or body. So we can, if I you can pass an interchangeable function body using Lambda, then I can easily replace that I don't have to create multiple classes. I can easily replace that with any of the functional interface functions that are there. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Okay. So that's the second example. Now this strategy is coming from the behavioral pattern. Okay. Behavior of that particular class we are changing. Now, okay, let's look at another example. So, here. We are talking about delegate factor. Now, what is the delegate? Uh, what sounds like? What is meaning of delegation? Giving, like. So giving an authority like something uh -huh. giving uh, authority or in our java terms i can delegate a certain computations to someone other class or other function or other component right yes oh. so now here you can see the particular code. What is doing? So it has. Let's see. Let's see the particular code. So it has uh, two classes. One is calculation of nav or the value of a certain share or mutual fund or whatever maybe okay and then within that nav you are passing a function so it's like a 
you are passing one functional interface okay but you are passing out here you are passing a string that is the input to your function and you are expecting a double value okay okay now here you have like a price finder and you are storing that particular function definition generally the function uh, interface having a one single method like apply and depending on it's taking an input that is first is mentioned as an input second was mentioned as an output so it's just take a string and it returns a value okay. now here you have like a stock feature and this stock feature is implementing this same kind of a, like a method okay and say so this is just going to go and fetch out the real stock by calling an external API. Okay, that's one. So that means from calculating nav, this is the particular lambda or function which is going to be responsibility or delegating this to fetch that particular value from the external source. Okay, now here normally what we do is when we write the particular code base, right? Normally, what generally we do is our test cases, we actually don't go and call out the external APIs, right? So there we can simply pass a lambda body or lambda function, which get resolved immediately, which is not going to call uh, anything for that particular matter. Okay. And that is one delegation object that we are passing and we compute so obviously it will come up with a fixed value now obviously in production code or in a dev code or whatever maybe you created you pass now the actual object that is the stock feature say this is just calling an external api it's wraps an external api and then whatever you know uh, stock value that you are passing it goes and fetch the value and then based on that you make a computation, right? So now, so here, same, the delegation patterns, we can also think this is also can be delegate a object request to another object, okay? So this is, where we are using is a object composition, right? So object composition means you have like your uh, calculate nav that is your first function. And then from that particular functions, you have another object that is composed of. And that object is actually the helper object, which is going to do the actual task. Okay. Now, normally how we basically you know do the delegation right so again the delegation can be done using a particular subclass right as the maybe the functional method that we're going to be implement right and that particular function or method implementation can now be reuse into your code base you can again create interfaces you can extend the interface and then that particular you know interface then you can you know put inside your function or delegating object in your compose function composition structure and that function going to be or the particular object method going to be making a call so simply out here, instead of again doing the old way of creating interfaces and all of that, I can you know simply use a lambda function, okay? Because end of the day, delegation delegate function is holding doing one unit of work, so it's just a function. So again, functions can be replaced with uh, your lambda. So you can lambda you know normal test mode what they're showing. The simple I can you know change it with a simple value that get resolved or what else i can sir, also this one actually i did not understand so this object passing yeah like this lambda one 
yeah this lambda one so first of all um, sir why we use for delegation okay so why we use the delegation what you understood by the delegation is that instead of you doing the particular actual code base right external external api call into your code base you actually pass this or write a separate class or function which will take up the required responsibility why we wanted to do this say if i wanted to say do the you know make an external other external api call instead of you know writing this api calls implementing that in each of the function where i need it i can have a like a helper method which can you know take up that particular responsibility so i'm not going to be doing that that will help first and foremost help in usability of my code that means the particular helper object can be used in my case and i can apply the same code base in all the places okay let's give you a simple example so for example i have to create i have to perform multiple operations in my dao objects right and in my dao object what i do in each of the dao object that you have seen are we writing the sql statement in each of the dao object or are we managing the opening of the connection closing the connection committing transaction or not committing transaction are we doing all of that into my code base each and every classes or we are delegating this to some other class for example if you are using jdbc there you are using jdbc template the jdbc template now managing your transaction execution your code converting your uh, source code into your corresponding java classes returning the list and throwing up the exception okay so what is the benefit of using that why we you know in our my code base i have like a jdbc template as a helper object being taken up because i don't want it to handle the database access transaction management connection management query execution result set mapping exception translation in each of my classes right rather than i got to delegate to an helper object here is a like a jdbc template and benefit of that is that i can only focus on my code or my computation that means from that particular you know source of record i find i can perform manipulation on that i or i can return that value back into the front end right or i can you know replace some of the default value that is missing correct does that make sense now why we use the delegation design pattern yes yes sir. yes so basically i am not going to do the real job another helper object will do the real job correct so i am delegating that particular functionality to this now how can i implement that basically the delegation pattern is done using composition that means the helper object will be a member of your class so it's a part of your object right that's one number one now for so that is one number two so that we understood right that's how we got to implement now in the delegation design pattern how we normally do it we create an interface we implementing a class we write all of the code in there we inject the implementing class against the interface and then wherever i require that particular helper method execution or delegation of that i call that particular method right correct that's how we normally implement it directly now so i have to create an interface so instead of creating an interface what i can do i can create a functional i can use the existing functional interfaces that is there right okay what is a function it is a has one say if it is like a taking one input and one output then i can use a simply replace that with a functional interface 
So here it is doing what? The actual delegation is that we are going to the external web services and I'm going to be fetching, I'm going to pass in the stock code, stock call symbol, and then I'm getting what is the current price or what is the closing market price, the last price of that particular stock, correct? From the stock exchange. Fine, wherever it is listed. Now that's I can easily do it using a function. I don't need to wrap it in, say, a class. I don't need to explain an interface doing that. I can simply pass the function itself, which will act as a helper method or helper function. So instead of creating a class or helper class, I can simply use the helper method, right? So in that helper method, or in that particular class, I can help her method. I can, you know, pass all this. Uh, I can make all these API calls, right? So when I'm making the call, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say stock fetcher, and this is like a static method. So by passing this get stock price. So that function, it's take a string and it's take a double. And then by using that, I can, you know, implement the delegation pattern right now. That's it. Sir, my uh, question was like uh, while uh, creating this constructor, uh, when we are passing this uh, ticker, uh, lambda function 33 point something, that one, sir, that one will be get written or the ones which is uh, already means in the stock feature class that will be get written here. Mm -hmm. Can I please repeat? So while we passing this uh, ticker function, uh, not ticker, but means this lambda function 33 point something which is there. Mm that will be getting written right mm -hmm. so what they're saying that in your delegation you can replace your delegation as per the need maybe just like we have seen the previous example right our previous pattern what was our previous pattern you guys can recall quickly hello sir I cannot hear you it is strategy pattern right yes yes strategy pattern. So what is the strategy pattern is about? I can change the computation, right? Yes, yes. So it is a mix of your strategy and the delegation pattern that we are showing. You are delegating to a function, but you can choose a strategy to return a value during your unit test cases with a fixed value without you know calling or replace that with a mock implementation, right? That we are using to in the mock it, correct? Yes. And in production code, or maybe in a smoke test, okay, what I can do, or you know, real system test in a dev environment, I can, you know, let instead of using the mock method, I can let that particular function get called. Okay. Sir, in Spring, sir, why means where do we write all this means code, like in entity class or somewhere differently? No, no, no. These codes are basically are uh, you know the problem to different solution, right? So if I need to delegate, okay, what I can do instead of you know writing classes interfaces, I can directly accept a particular class or interface function as a delegate to my method or to my constructor. And call that particular uh, interface, functional interfaces, interface method into my code. Again, where you can implement, you can implement in anywhere. You can implement your controller layer, you can implement your service layer, you can implement in any layer. It's maybe the case, maybe. Right. Okay. Okay. It is not talking about where you can implement that. It is talking about if you have a certain problem. You can easily use this kind of patterns to quickly come around that. It's just a opinionated or prescription way for designing for a certain problem. Okay, so if I need to, you know, use a helper class, what may be the pattern I'm going to use? I'm going to choose. Delegation pattern where I need to be. If I don't want to handle all of these things, right? Transaction management. Ex, I'm just given an example, right? Transaction management, etc. Right. So I'm going to be writing a helper object and you know compose that helper object as a uh, 
construct a reference and store in that and use that particular object. Now, obviously, with Java 8 Lambda and stream, what I can do instead of you know taking the whole object reference, I can take the method reference or the function interface and then call the function interface wherever maybe I require it. Okay. Does that clarify? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's see the next example. Now, decoration design pattern. Sir, can you go to strategy design pattern once again? Sure. So, uh, in this case, uh, uh, while we are using this filter function, hmm. okay, so. So it will return me a predicate. So, sir, that predicate will uh, give me a uh, return me a value of true or false. Mm. So instead of like directly using this predicate, why we are not using this whole thing like that values, uh, trues, and like the checking functions for even and not? Why we are not using that in the uh, filter function as whole? Huh. So basically, you wanted to make this function generic, right? And you wanted to pass in the predicate logic into that. So yeah. normally, if you because wanted to write yeah. this, I have to write three different version of the same function, right? I can encapsulate in, in three different classes. Hmm? So what is instead of you know duplicating the code, right? So obviously, we understand that duplication of this code is not a good practice. Do you agree with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, in that case, instead of duplicating that, what you are doing is we are passing the strategy of selection as a predicate or functional interface. Mm -hmm. So that we can keep one single version of a function, but the strategy of selection will be different that you are passing as a second argument, as a predicate. The, but the predicate will return a true or false, right? Hmm. Then so, we are mapping it. Mm -hmm. Then we are using the map to int. No, map to int is basically we are doing is that we what we have is here up to here we have a stream of integer, right? Okay. Yes. Yes. So why are we doing map to int? Because a map to integer stream has a useful function like sum. That's why we have converted into map to int and then we sum it out. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sir. I understood. So the strategy is only to replace the selection logic that you see are sending across. And in case of a delegation, we are actually passing the whole functions out here. That will be help as a delegate or the helper function. That's it. In this two place. And here also, like previous strategy, we can you know change the delegation function in case of a test. It can be like a mock implementation that you normally do. But in case of we are writing smoke test, uh, we can you know use the real object, a real call. Okay. Any confusion out here? No, sir. Okay. Now, before we go to the decoration pattern, let's understand decoration pattern first by with the simple example that you mostly use. So normally in Java file, what do you do? Uh, we either use the file reader, right? We have a, like a character a character uh, reader or we have a byte reader in Java. We can read the file in a both mode. Correct? So basically we have an input stream, output stream. Then we have a reader and writer interfaces. Uh, or the classes, right? Interfaces and there are some classes. Okay. Now, 
input stream indicates a byte values right but for the end user or for our systems uh, we normally like to work with character instead of you know byte uh, values or byte byte streams representing string as a byte we wanted to represent them as a character or string okay so in that case what we have is we have seen this very uh, famous example when i reading a particular file we use buffer reader right or then we have like a stream reader buffer reader etc etc so what we do is we pass one object inside another object then inside another object etc and what this object does or what is the chain of method is actually does right the chain of method actually do a conversion okay. yes sir they basically decode it one format into the another form so basically using the decoration pattern what is basically does it takes the byte array from that particular file in input stream format and then it convert that into a string array then you can also use the read line function on top of that right so that is our simple example that we normally you know find into our code base that is very popular example if you wanted to put for decoration pattern so basically we have a, like a stream reader then input stream reader so first comes your buffer reader then you comes have an input stream reader then you have your original file reader and from the each thing now buffer data does it it adds the buffer capability into that so it adds the internal buffer to read those character string and then you have a read line kind of a method that you can also see so what is the decoration pattern in general terms means so basically it's what means it's a decorate certain input or behavior right additional behavior or additional uh, features or addition we can say functionality right and we can you know create this uh, one decorator and then we can apply another decorator thereby we can create a decoration chain okay for example sir by the by this sir if like we are adding this new behavior then it's altering the structure no so how it is yes, yes. in a different so basically you have like a one uh, input right one decoration input you can create a chain of decoration one decoration output becomes another decoration input right and like this way so basically if we see our normal example our input stream converted into an input stream reader so what that particular decoration does input stream convert the character array to a byte array oh, sorry byte array to your character array right so it decorates or changes the input object to a byte array now on the top of byte array what it does is now it creates a buffer using buffer buffer stream reader so it basically read your input stream reader and add a byte array and on the top of byte array when there is have the read line it basically goes and read from its internal memory or buffer and then shows that particular value okay So here, 
just like previous example that we have seen here also uh, we are going to be using composition that means one decorator goes inside another decorator another decorator goes inside another decorator okay so you can pass these references via either object array or sorry in the constructor and we're going to be using uh, using decoration pattern okay it can easily extend the particular object but here i don't have to modify my original class right so if i wanted to add anything or add anything to it i can wrap it up in another decorator so that decorator does another functionality or do any kind of transformation that is required. So my original object doesn't require any changes. Okay, so original object doesn't need to handle string to byte, byte to character, anything it doesn't need to handle, right? And it also help us extending functions, okay? for a particular targeted class or extending the behavior to the object or extending that without the origin class being changed and without the origin class known about this particular decorator. Okay. So here we don't need to do any kind of uh, interface kind of thing. Or we, if we want, we can you know, apply using interfaces also. Okay. So we can extend our classes into that. So it's basically also wrap it up into that. Now, let's see an example. Normally, what it does is uh, we take a snap uh, using our cameras, right? Smartphone cameras. Now, on the snap, we get the raw image, right? And on top of the raw image, how can we decorate that? We can apply different filters, right? We can sharpen up the image, we can, you know, make it black and white. So, what are those? So we can think of this filter as decorator, correct? Okay. What is it does? They basically change the pixels, operate on the pixel and convert this pixel into a different values. And thereby the original image or raw image can modify it into different outcomes. So raw image here is actually the input object and then that particular raw image functionality has been enhanced by the filter source. Okay. And also there in a particular image, I can apply multiple filters as well. For example, I make the image as a black and white. And top of that, I add a, another uh, filter that added frame around that. Correct. So that means raw image goes into black and white filter, then black and white filter also goes into your frame field that adds a frame. So that means we create a decorator, two decorators or filter chain into that. Okay. So this is like a simple example. Let's go through that. So here you have um, one class name camera, okay, which is uh, capturing pictures, okay. Say for example, now in this camera we have like a function that is filtered, okay, and we can pass here uh, different kind of filters that you can pass using constructor or here they have passed using a setter function. Okay. 
and those filters are basically a stream uh we need how you can you know apply one filter over the another filter so on the function right uh we basically add compose method okay so they basically one output becomes the input to the next one so all the filters using a reducer we have the first filter then the next filter so those are basically apply one over the another okay. and this filter is then stays out here now when say we pass certain capture and here is a we pass a like a color color is coming from java awt panel package right that we normally don't have to use much and then we can do like a filter apply on the all the filters are then get applied and the new color been created and that particular color get returned simple example okay sir so, why, this uh, in the filter uh, sir, dot compose function what it is doing yeah so in the compose function what is basically does is that one function is applied before the next function so just like a different filters like we have talked about we got to use a black and white filter then we got to be using their frame filter so this filter does what it takes one color and return another color okay so when i'm going to pass multiple color multiple filter to this one may be changing the color to brighten up one may be darken up whatever so when i say the compose what's going to happen first this function has applied right so apply will call and what is the output of that particular color goes into the input of the next function okay thereby we going to have like a filter chain one after another after another so if i passing three functions the first function get called that that mean apply the original value right here we calling apply this particular color is coming filter one it change the color to something l it goes to the second function then it calls the apply then it generate another color called color two and then the color two goes into the third filter which is produce the final color that is color T and that particular color has been written. Okay. So just this like a Lambda stream, right? It is not getting executed right now, but it's stored out here. And when the apply being called, it is been all been executed and it creates a new color. But each of the intermediate color is passed on to the next decorator or next filter or next function so how to do that for doing that we have to use compose function so that means once output goes into the another input that's what the how we can you know change those decorators now in the apply function what that does that particular particular pixel or color manipulation that the filter going to do Okay. So far, this is clear. Any other questions we have? No, sir. Okay. No, sir. Sir, okay. using three dots, sir, is for multiple parameters. So three dots. Yeah. In... Three dot is a work arcs. So when you put three dots, means you can pass in numbers of parameter. There is no limit to, right? Okay. Okay, instead of you know taking an array, you can put var cards that we have three dots. So now here, what we are doing is, uh, so we have like a camera, right? And here we have added one another functional interface that is a consumer. It consumes a value, right? Okay. 
so in this particular consumer value what is doing it's uh, printing out okay this is the format this is the filter info that is sticking and it's camera capture new color right fine so the camera is capturing the new color already when we created the camera we again this is like a functional interface so this is not yet called this will print out when you're going to be executing our code so camera is currently uh, there is no filter right the filter values are not being sent out here so print capture accept there is no filter no filter is there that we're sending out so if i execute this just let's just execute and see what is the outcome Okay. But the next thing is that here we are passing the one filter color, one is brighter. That going to be we're going to setting that particular filter into that particular camera object. Okay. And the same camera object out here, right? The capture and it sends a color to that. So with no filter, whatever you know, color that is there, that is being printed as it is. With a brighter filter, what happened is the color get modified. Okay. Next, you are sending a darker filter. So again, the color get modified to the lower values. Okay, because it become dark. Now, if I wanted to apply the brighter and uh, darker multiple filters together, so what happened is in your color, right? In your camera you have a camera object and then you are calling the set filters right so that means you are overriding the filter value that is there then you are calling the color dot capture okay so you are calling on that particular capture function right you are passing a new color you pass the new color and what happened this uh, now it's going to go through this particular filter chain or the decorator chain one we're going to make it brighter another going to make it darker right so here when the apply the input color is comes up what it does the first filter perform the operation it changes the color value to certain values right and the second one when implemented on the updated value it changes the color to dark right and how they are, you know, all one after another, because what we did, we created the filter as a list of filters, right? Uh, the list of decorators we can, uh, it's a function, right? So this function is now having the list of filters and that it's like a single function, single function. We just having the streams of filter and then we are reducing that down to a single function, right? And then otherwise, if there is nothing get created, we just return the function as it is. That means when the first case, when send that particular filter list as empty, because that set filter is empty. So when the set filter list is empty, so this stream reduce is not going to produce anything. So color, whatever you have sent into the function, that going to be written as it is. So that's why. It whatever is the value that is there when the filter is blank it is written as it is the function the color remains the same now when you set up a brighter color so then the only one filter get executed there is no more filter so it get brighter now similarly for only whenever using the darker color then it is going up now if we have passing two filters one after another what happen is now first it's going to make bright then it's going to make darker but again, the value will replace with something different is being produced. So again, there, what we are seeing out here is that we can easily use functional interfaces and Lambda to define this decorator. So decorator is again, in simple terms, it takes the input and convert to a different format by extending a different functionality into that. One functionality is brighter, one functionality is darker without modifying the existing object that is there. 
so this is clear you know yes sir okay let's see other example So normally say this is like a Miller class. Uh, now we see, um, let's see the normal example. Normally in our Java code, what you see is that um, using interfaces, right? Um, normally how we can, you know, create your um, better code base. So better code base, what you can create or the Fluent API, how we can create. Fluent API, I can create using like this. Um, so normally when you find in a lots of code bases is that I can add dot, 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 and I can create an object, right? Normally we see that. So for doing this, now this code base, normally if we write, we say mailer, say this is simply a mailer functionality, which basically taking a two string, form string, subject, body, and then it has the same method. Okay. Now to do this, normally what we're going to do, we're going to create a uh, Java object, mailer, then I'm going to set the values out there, and then I'm going to call the same method to it. Now, instead of doing that, what you can do, um, you can simply call return the same object, right? And if we do that in your normal methods, right? Instead of calling getter setter, what you can write, you can write like this mailer send, that is your function which is taking the value. And then you can simply write mailer form to subject and body. And you can send out the particular mail that is there. One of creating a fluent interface based method or API definition. That's all. I have not covered all the, you know, creational behavior or other patterns. I've covered only few, and I have shown case that how can we implement that using functional interfaces. You guys can, you know, now let's explore on your own, for example, build a pattern that you normally see also into your Java code base, or we can see that using Lombok that you can also implement. Uh, there is like singleton pattern. It has few edge cases factory pattern, abstract factory pattern. Those are there, prototype pattern. Then you have adapter pattern that we have seen, composite pattern and the specific format or delegation pattern we have seen. Packet pattern is there, proxy pattern is also there. So also this kind of patterns are there, iterative pattern we have seen. So those are the basically different patterns. Now we have just we have to go through the some of the patterns and see how we can you know rewrite them using lambda so that will be much more conscious and better code base and easier to maintain than creating multiple classes interfaces etc okay so the main benefit of using lambda with design patterns is that we can reduce the number of classes that you create it is uh, conscious and other body can also understand that we are using a particular solution or the design pattern for a particular fix problems. Any other questions you have? No, sir. Okay. Let's pause the recording for now.